All right, all right. Back with another episode of Boss Talk. I feel like I can have a conversation with anybody on any level, so that's what we're going to do. On this episode, we got KO. It's my family. It's my relative. And uh, we're going to speak on a lot of things that he got going on. As you can see in the background, you hear he in the gym right now. He stay in the gym. That's what he do. Uh, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself to the people, man. What's your name? Uh, Linnell K.O. Bellows, you know. Hello. Southern Cali, yeah, Southern Cali rapper. You understand me? That's Living right, that's right. Vegas. Professional boxer. 26 and 3 is my record. Hello. Knockouts. Hello. Yeah. I, I try to punch anybody I can when I can. <laughs> <laughs> now, where you grew up? Let the people know where you grew up. Uh, well, I was born in Kansas City, Missouri, raised in California. From Compton to Palmdale to the Valley, like Southern Cali is my house, my home. Right, right. Now, how? When did you move to Vegas? Uh, shit, I've been out here for a long time. Cause uh, I've been out here shit uh, about fifteen years now. Damn, nigga, you from Vegas now? <laughs> I, I all my town in Southern California. I turned 21, 21, 22 out here, and shit. All I do is just jump on the freeway, go home. But yeah, this is where my house is out here in Vegas. I could be from Vegas. <laughs> yeah, I just that's, fucking with you. I mean, yeah, I be doing that shit to niggas, man. I just be fucking with niggas. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah I get you. I get you. So love. <laughs> so how long you been training in boxing? Uh, I've been a pro for 10 years, uh, so I would say I've been training about 13, 13, 14 years in boxing period. So, in its entirety. What, what, what age years. would you say, like? Uh, 22. 22? Yeah, I had a late start. Shit, a late start is better than no start. Talk to me. Straight up. So, l let me ask you this. Because I know, you know, you family, and I remember you being a little crybaby when you turn into a damn monster. Because I've seen the fights. I've seen the clips. I've been wanting to go, but, you know, eventually I'm going to show up. But when when did this turn into just straight monsterism? Uh, boxerism didn't happen until I was 22 years old. I was out in the streets out there in California, you know. Right. Survival is a must. Only the strong will survive. So. I've been having my knuckle game up for some years now. So being a kid, being a crybaby with my big cousins, that's one thing. But in them streets, ain't nobody doing that. <laughs> facts, facts, facts. Now, let me ask you this. How how was you able to turn your life around mentally? Because, you know, physically, you know, I know for a fact back in the day, we was blowing big time weed. And then you got the gang banging that's out there. And then you got the financial situation. You know what I'm saying? If you ain't making no money being able to survive, you can't even focus or concentrate on any of your goals. How was you able to adjust all of that? Because that's what's out there for us. You, you got to deal with, with with the peer pressures. You got to deal with the police. You, you know, you're going to have to handle the gang banging shit. You're going to have to um, still find a way to make money at the same time. Became bigger than the bullshit. You know what I mean? Like yeah. ultimately, taking care of my family, taking care of myself. You know that 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 became first to me. You know what I mean, survival was always first, but this was a goal in which that I had to change my dynamics in order to achieve. And I was up for the challenge. You know what I'm saying? Did being you? Bad, being hard is easy. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's, getting in this boxing, it, it was challenging. So. I took the I took the challenge head on and uh thank God I've been able to succeed so far. Hey Amen, thank God. Did you just wake up one day and was like, man, this shit gotta change or somebody told you, like the big homie or No, 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 the other homies put me up on game. Truth be told, uh I was at when y'all stayed out here in Vegas, there was an apartment building that was across the street from a gym. And in your apartment building, yeah, you know, I had the basketball goal. I was out there playing ball, and then we had just finished the game. And actually, I was smoking weed at that time. And uh, I asked the, uh, uh, the the people out there, like, "Hey, what's up with that boxing gym across the street?" Nobody had no information. I'm like, "Okay, how y'all stay 
across the street from a gym and don't know nothing about your surroundings. So I took my blunt, drove across the street, right. checked out the hours. They told me to open their ten. Well, not they told me, but the sign said open at ten. I went home and uh, rested up. And uh, the next day, I was in the gym at ten o'clock, trying to see what they do. And uh, I ain't looked back since. So. You brought up the fact that we was living out there. Yeah, we was living out there and making a lot of money doing other stuff, in my opinion, headed the wrong direction. So when we left, was there somebody at that gym that, that kept you motivated or helped you out? Nah, that was just the beginning, uh, the beginning stages of my, my whole little uh, boxing uh, career or, or uh, boxing endeavor, if you will. That's when you had the braids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah smoking yeah, hella weed. We was riding down on niggas, you know what I mean? A lot of shit yeah. going on. You know, you was in the studio with us. You know, we was rapping and all kind of shit. Well, see, what ended up happening was uh, I, 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 I almost made the Olympic team. And when, the, when that happened, when, when that happened, it made me look at this boxing thing completely different. How did you get that Olympic team opportunity? Niggas just don't wake up every day and be like, nigga, I'm finna go try out for the Olympics. Even though I was smoking and doing what I was doing, yet the, the gym boxing had captivated my interest to the max. So I was in the gym every day. I just had bad habits that I couldn't shake at the time. But once uh, the opportunity presented itself, I understood what it took to get there, and I was, a, I was able to uh, basically change over it. Cut off some of the bad, uh, the bad uh, seeds that I had planted in my yard, and I start start w- working on getting shit, trying to be a better me, really, re- realistically. How was you able to survive financially? Uh, I mean, you still you 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 live one foot in the street, one foot out the street. I had I had certain little eyes and ends jobs, you know. I cut hair too, so. And I mean, realistically, I'm gonna find my way one way or another. And so I was able to do that until uh, the transition was made for me to turn pro. And then I was able to rely on boxing for my financial uh, haven. I, I totally forgot you got skills on the, with the barbershop shit, man, with, with the uh, clippers, man. I forgot. Yeah, I used to come by and, and I used to come by and just and support the business. Of course, of course, as you always have. <laughs> they used to hook me up, homie. You know what I'm saying? Shit. Okay, so, 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 what happened to uh, what's the, the old boy you used to roll with all the time, Lee? Boy, that's my that, that, yeah. that's my first cousin. He out here, he doing good. He boxing yeah. too? Nah, he not boxing. He, he, he just be on this grown man business. Right. Family man. You know what I'm saying? Married yeah. and all that good shit. Everything going smooth for him. Got three three big old sons. Uh-huh. <laughs> Life going good for the for my <clears throat> my boy. That's good to hear. Does he come to the uh boxing fights? Yeah, he's been to a few. I don't know why I imagine him like being like in your corner, like a corner man or something. Um, so with that being said, I mean, he would have been a little bit more present if he could. But I mean, he had the kids and they were young. Because yeah, I know when I was out kid. there, was it what, what who was calling this kid Fat Fat? Which one is that? No, that's Fat Mac. Yeah, fat there we go, Fat Mac. Son. Yeah, he was just like barely born right there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like. Yeah, he was young. He was like two, three years old type shit. Right. So he couldn't really be in the gym like that. He had to make that money like right there immediately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he was in there for a little bit, but then, you know, shit happens. Life happens. And so he did what he had to do to make sure he he was able to provide. You know, he's a man in his house, so right. he did what he had to do. That's good to hear. That's good to hear. So... How long was you at that gym across the street from that apartment we were standing in before you, like, moved over to whatever? I was only there for, like, uh, I don't even know, because uh, before 
y'all left, I had already transitioned to kind of like another gym. Okay. And I ran into a different coach that. So what ended up happening with that gym is uh, across the street from y'all, he let me come on like a trial base as long as I helped him in the gym. Oh, yeah. Right, other, right. He took care of my gym dude. Well, once I started getting good, and, and truth be told, I heard a few people. All of a sudden, I had gym dudes that need to be paid. And I'm like, you told me that I was good. He was like, yeah, but the gym ain't going to pay for itself type shit. And I'm like, right. so my $65 is what's stopping the gym from being in the gym. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I'm like, okay, so I had to take my, my talent elsewhere. Right. And it's not even that I had a problem with paying. It was just what we had already discussed. Now, all of a sudden, it's different. Right. If this ain't that, then let me go and make that move. Yeah. Real talk, real talk. So after that happened, you went to another gym. Yeah, I ended up, uh, it was a gym on Fremont. It shut down. In downtown uh, Vegas? Yeah, yeah, you know, that's a dope area. You know I mean? so, so it was super uh, hanging on by thin thread. Right, that shit mind. risky, uh, hubby, risky. Yeah, man, listen <laughs> to me. In the middle of training, people... Uh, Sliding into the gym, right? Ride rocks up under their tongue because the boys coming down the street. Oh you. shit! So, so from there, that gym ended up getting shut down. I ended up at North Las Vegas at Richard Steele's gym, and then right there is where I started my amateur boxing career. Okay. Now, was it was there a coach that that gave you some game that took you to the next level? When I first started, I had a. Dr. Jones, his name was Dr. Alonzo Jones. That's who took me to the Nationals and we almost made the Olympic team. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. That's what's up, what's up. So, eventually you got your first amateur fight there? Yeah. Okay. Did it pay or or was it just... Right. Amateurs don't pay. Yeah, I mean, it paid my ego because I went in there and knocked Buddy out. So. Right. <laughs> I, was, I was on cloud nine about that business for sure. Right. So once you become an amateur boxer, that's considered professional, though, right? No, sir. Okay. No, sir. Okay. Amateur, amateur boxing is is basically like a you know you got a D league or you know, it's like a D league. And yeah. You got the NBA. Okay. So it's like you respect it as a fighter in the sense, but. You're not professional level, and at that time, that means that you fought with you fought with a a headgear on. Once you turn pro, the headgear goes off, and them glove sizes change. Okay. It gets a little bit more physical. So basically, <laughs> yeah. anybody could be an amateur boxer. Oh yeah, for sure. Okay. Okay. You, at your, uh, 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 right now, at your age, you can come in and be an amateur boxer. Right. Okay. Okay. Nigga, you act like I'm sixty or some shit. <laughs> hey, my man, you you yeah, knocking. I know. I think get up there, boy. <laughs> you knocking? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, okay. So, how many fights did you have to have before, like, you start getting attention? Uh, I mean, I won't say the amount of fights matter with the attention. The attention is just based on shit. Who's there when you fight? So what ended up happening was uh, before I turned pro and I went to the Nationals, what helped give me some recognition, uh, former champ uh, Caleb Plant, I beat him. Okay. And uh, and he was a, a, a prestige amateur. He had been on an Olympic team type thing. So uh, that's right there is when I started to get a little bit of notoriety. I mean, nobody knew that Caleb was going to be the champ at the time. So I'm not saying that, like, oh, you be Caleb. Now we know you somebody. But they didn't know me, and I came in and beat somebody that they did know. So now it's looking like, who is this? Right. Who is this? And how you did know? you beat him? Knocked him out, smoothed out? Nah, 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 nah. I beat him on points. Okay. I beat him on points. How many rounds? Uh, three. Amateur fights is only three rounds. Okay. Did he hurt you at any point? Uh, no, sir. <laughs> okay, so you, you do your amateur. How many how many fights does it take for you to go to professional? Uh, 
amateur fight. It's, it's, it's no set amount. It's really based on your trainer, uh, your trainer, uh, how much boxing IQ you have, and uh, and you pretty much go from there. Realistically, I mean, because I know a couple of people there was a, well, a fighter that was a world champ, former world champion, who who never had not even one amateur fight. So I yeah. mean, it's really about your boxing IQ and, and like the rounds that you get your experience and 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 somebody believing in you, shit, for real. So this whole time you fighting and all this, you're not getting paid. No sir. Okay, so you saw the vision, and, and you knew eventually you was going to be getting paid. No, I did not. Oh. It wasn't until I went to the Nationals that I was like, yeah, uh, maybe I can get paid. That was only because a lot of people said, oh, man, you don't have an amateur style. You can get more of a pro style because you like to hurt people. Amateurs back in the day were point based Like, you had, whoever threw the most punches and hit somebody the most, yeah, they would yeah. win. You know what I mean? It wasn't really designed for you to go out there and knock nobody out. That's kind of what Mayweather do. He gonna oh, outbox you. He gonna outbox you twelve rounds and get all now, the points. Now, yeah, recently. Yeah, I ain't talking about the younger yeah, days, pretty, but yeah. Pretty boy May, uh Pretty pretty boy Floyd used to beat your ass. Right. <laughs> pretty boy used to uh, get in there and test your chin all type of ways. Real talk. So, have you? Like, they took you out of the country to fight yet? I fought in Guatemala. We, How's that type of shit? Uh, I mean, it's... So, Guatemala is like... It's more like a, a third world country. Yeah, I know. So, it's, uh, it's not like it's going to uh, Dubai or something. It's just getting you ready like, for Brazil. I'm thinking, I got Brazil in my head. <laughs> uh, no, I've been to Brazil, but no, I didn't go fight out there. Okay. I would, shit. I'll fight wherever they're going to pay me at. Right. <laughs> so now that you got all of these fights under your belt, you knocking everyone out? Like, how many fights did you have, actually, in total before you went to professional? I had 33 amateur fights. Damn, that's a lot. Nah, no, it's not. It's no, not? It's not no, because uh, you got to realize, so many people have hundreds of fights. Hundreds of fights. Hundreds of amateur Extra. fights? Amateur fights. That's yeah. Amateur. All right, my man. Uh, that's usually because they start at a, at a young age, seven years old. You can start competing at seven years old. And some of these people have been boxing their whole entire lives. Right. Where me, I didn't start boxing until I was a grown man already. So, amateur amateur record-wise, I was blessed to even get the 33 that I got. Okay. So, you had 33 amateur fights. You won all of them? No, sir. I was twenty-seven and six. Twenty-seven and six. Okay. Yes. What was the feeling when you? First of all, did you ever get knocked out? No, sir. Ever got knocked down? Yes. Okay. Not in the amateurs. Not in the amateurs, but as a pro, yeah, I've been knocked down. Have you been knocked out as a pro? No, sir. I haven't been knocked out. Okay. 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 So. Because I, I see it only a few clips, but um, how long are your average rounds? Like, you're going eight rounds with them, 12 rounds, three rounds? Are you coming to Mike Tyson in the first round? I mean, it just depends. I've stopped people in the first round. I've stopped people in the eighth round. You know, I mean, everybody doesn't go out. You know what I mean? Everybody doesn't stay in there, neither. So yeah. it just varies due to the, the person or by the person. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. I, I, I set it up. Shit, really. You be in there talking shit? What'd you say, cuz? You be in there talking shit? Mm, not really. I kind of let the gloves do it. I mean, every now and then when I see their eyes get big, I ask them, do I hit hard? <laughs> I, get, I hit hard, though. Like, that type of shit. But yeah, I'm not big on the shit talking. Right, right. So, at what point does Mayweather Promotions and Boxing notice you? Uh, I was over there. I, I, I got ready for the national tournament in Colorado there. And then after I lost, I came back there. I was sparring and training. And then uh, 
I ended up uh, turning pro, and I had two fights. Uh, I had two fights already, and then I had one by knockout. And uh, Floyd was getting ready to fight Miguel Cotto. I remember so, that. I remember that fight. Yeah. His first day of camp, he went to just four, and I was in the gym. And so when I got in the gym, they were like, oh, yeah, Floyd he coming in, he want to box you. And I'm like, box who? And he was like, box you. I'm like, okay, so I got my hands wrapped up and everything. And Wait, then, hold on. We're not going to just brush over that. What was the feeling when you heard that shit? That's like some, that's crazy. Uh, I don't really know how to feel. You feel me? Like, because all at the same time, I still got this mentality of he's just a man. You feel me? Fast. But boxing wise, he's an icon. You right. know what I mean? He does what he does. And I've been training, so, you know, I, I, I walk around my chest out a little bit too. Right. You feel me? So I'm like, I'm like, I'm humble. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not scared. And I'm like, it's going to be what it's going to be. And I, in my head, I'm thinking, this might be a day you get your ass whipped, though, all at the same time. You feel me? Because the boxing, like, this is a sport. This is a sport. This ain't be crossing them at the 7-Eleven and we get into it. Yeah. This, you know what I mean? This is where, this is what he does. You know what I'm saying? This right. is what he does. And this is now what I do, but he's been doing it for a lot longer. So, I mean, realistically, I just, shit, put my chin, chin up high and Said shit, let's do it. Cause I figure who better than me? <laughs> who better than me? You feel me? Especially at that time, who better than me? Right. You feel me? And it was an honor. You know what I mean? It was an honor too. Because I, I coming up, I wasn't a boxing fan to the point where I was watching all the fights. I watched the Mike Tyson fights when people had the black box type shit, like back in the day. But I wasn't sitting down. Oh, I need to be in front of the TV for every boxing match. I didn't really care for it. I just knew how to fight. I like to fight. Right. Type shit. So now to get in the ring or about to be getting in the ring with where where this considered maybe one of the best to ever did it to do it. Like, I'm like, damn, this shit is like surreal. You feel me? But I'm here for it. You feel me? I'm here for it. So right. I just did what I had to do. Got put my shit on. He came in, gave me that. Got in there, we got to it. And from there, after at what was it? What, three rounds, three or four rounds. But it was doghouse rounds. It was like three minutes. I, I'm sure one of the rounds was at least seven to eight minutes. You know what I mean? Like, but, but after that, after that, uh, you told me, "Oh, you're gonna be all right." You, you with me now, and that it, it, it went down in history for me. Just as simple man. as that, huh? Yeah. Is he was, was he quicker than you thought, or did he go light on you? Did he come with the heat? No, I, I'm always gonna come with the heat. But is he quicker than I thought? Listen to me. He hit me one time off the no off the rip. As a matter of fact, he hit me with a jab so fast that by the time my head came back down. He was in the same position that I was looking at him before he hit me <laughs> in my face. I said, did he hit me? <laughs> yeah, but he's buddy, super fast. Quick timing, all that. Like, you know, he was still young and, and ambitious. Well, younger and, right. and, and ambitious. And, yeah, you know what I mean? He was getting ready to fight Miguel Cotto. You know what I mean? Right. Miguel Cotto is one of the greatest they ever did it too. In my opinion, I just like warriors. You feel me? So he was still on this shit, and so by the time he he hit me and my my head came back down, like I said, he was already moving around doing something different. I'm like, my boy, I'm gonna need you to slow down. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. I mean, shit, yeah. that's crazy. So yeah, but I got mine in, you know. That's all I was about to say. Did you get anything in? Did you hit him? Man, listen yeah. to me. I, 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 I bust his lip. Oh, whoa. And he, said, I, and he tell me, he said, are, uh, are you with me? He, don't worry about you with me now, but I'm going to fuck you up next time we box, though. <laughs> so in my head, I had this man <laughs> on my bumper 
about fucking me up the next time we box. Wow. So that right there did something for me because I was like, I was proud to have hit him. You know what I'm saying? And right. him and bust his shit, but the whole the whole training camp, I was like, today might be the day that Floyd come in here and try to fuck me up. Damn, that's crazy. So yeah. from there on out, it was like, all right, so you with Mayweather? So. Yeah, I was I was with them then. So my my third fight, uh, my third fight, they uh they put me on and it's, it went down from there. So. That's what's up. That's what's up. So, what's the top three lessons you learned from Mayweather? Uh, a true champion can adapt to anything. Uh, hard work and dedication. And, and, uh, mm, shit, um, what would be the third, uh, what would be the question, uh, and I guess take care of who take care of you type thing, you always have a good team. Right. He ain't teaching no low. Mayweather moves or anything or something you notice? Nah, nah, nah. I'm a, I'm a, he's more of a, like a slick counter puncher. I'm, I'm a puncher boxer, right. which means that 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 I I rely more on my my powerful punch and brush to my boxing skills, even though I can box. Right. That's what's up. So, so his, yeah, his IQ is crazy though. The shit he can teach. He's taught me things, but it wasn't the shoulder roll. That, Type shit. It was just like, <laughs> just what to look for. You know what I'm saying? What to look for when you're looking at a punker type thing. Yeah. So, what's the next fight? Uh, we we working on something now. I, I'm not signed with Mayweather Promotions right now, or, not, or any longer. But uh, I'm hoping something early next year. We working on some something. Uh, we we're hoping for something. How about that? I mean, right. we've talked to a few uh, promoters and matchmaker so hopefully uh we get the green light on something soon and we go from there that's what's up so on those you said you have what's your record i'm 20 wins six losses and three draws with 13 knockouts out of my 20 wins that's pretty good family let me ask you this though off them six losses did you learn anything from them absolutely well, first, of, first and foremost is that a loss ain't the end of the road. Right. Because a lot of people get down on themselves and and and, and want to quit. And no, no, no. I didn't take bigger losses than that in, in life. Why am I worried about a judge who said I lost a fight who probably never fought a day in their life? You know what I mean? Like, I'm not worried about what they say. I went out there, as long as I give them my all, I, I, I win no matter what anyway. Right. Sometimes sometime it's a it's a better man that night. You know what I mean? Fact. Every loss, I can't say I lost, uh, I believe, believe convincingly. I feel like some of them losses I won, but the, the judges saw it otherwise. Right. I ain't crying about it. You feel me? Yeah, so the first and foremost is just knowing that a loss ain't the end of the road. Then... The secondly, shit, get better. <laughs> you plain and simple, like, get better. And that's what your wins and your losses. That's real it's shit. Always, improvement is always, is always possible and necessary. So, I mean, it ain't the end of the road there. Shit, try harder next time. Do better next time. That's what's up. That's what's up. All right, man. So we're going to wrap this thing up, man. Let the people know your name one more time or where they can find you at on the boxing or, you know, the Instagram or whatever you want to put out there. Man, I'm Linnell K.O. Bellows. Uh, you can find me on Instagram and uh, Twitter at K.O. Bellows. Uh, Facebook, Linnell Bellows. So I'm around. You can look me up on Box Rec. I mean, I still do this. This is what I do. Right. And uh, I ain't found nobody that, 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 that can break me yet, so. And going to start now. There it is for the people. We're going to wrap it up, man. I appreciate you giving me some time, family. I appreciate you having time for me. Happy holidays, man. You know what I mean? 
Yes, sir. Same to you. Happy New Year, cuzzo. For sure. Happy New Year's, and I'm going to holla at you, man. We're going to wrap this thing up. Yes, Lord. All right, man. This episode is dedicated to my Uncle Derek, Uncle Steve, Uncle Fred. Rest in peace.